Hey YouTube, welcome back. This is the second big build that we've invested our time into for the 0.9 patch. And honestly, one of the reasons that we're playing this character is somebody in Twitch chat told me that there were no good Spellblade builds. And sometimes when someone tells you that, it just gets under your skin and it makes you want to play a character. So we're playing a Spellblade because surprise, Spellblade is still plenty fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, Flame Reeve in the past was one of the most popular ways to play Flame, or it was mo one of the most popular ways to play Spellblade. It's also one of the strongest builds in the game. It's just like auto crit, huge AOE damage, lots of good defense. And as it turns out, most of those things are still in place. However, we chose not to play Flame Reeve. Instead, we're playing Surge. Flame Reeve was nerfed a tiny bit, no longer auto crits. That's going to affect our build as well. But Flame Reeve kind of has low AOE. And yeah, you can scale increased area of effect on your gear these days. But the low AOE just kind of felt bad to me. And I wanted to try something else instead. So we're playing melee damage surge. Most of the questions that I've received about this build are why am I not using Fragment of the Enigma like the other YouTube videos that I put up. This is a melee build. We're scaling melee damage. We're using swords. We're bonking people. We are not scaling spell damage at all. Visually, the build looks a little bit similar in terms of the mechanics of the build, what's going on, how we're scaling damage. It is quite different. It's melee, not a spell. So there's another build that I want to call out. Dread from Epoch Builds, whatever he goes by these days. He has an excellent build guide talking about playing Surge during the 084, 085, one of those patches before multiplayer launch. And he had some great ideas about how to scale your damage. We're going to talk about differences of how I built my character as opposed to how he built his in the past. We're also going to talk about some new toys that you have in 0 0.9. Notably, melee implicits are a huge one. And we'll also talk about new more damage multipliers that you can get all over your gear. So with that said, here we are in game. We're going to talk about a couple of those things first. And then toward the end of this video, we'll go over all the skills, the gear. I have a build planner to share with you as well. It's in the description of this video. All of that is great. So for this character, uh, the first thing that I want to mention is a short video that I put up on YouTube previously, but it's melee adaptive damage. In the past, swords, axes, every melee weapon had plus physical melee damage on it. So you'll see the implicit of my sword, it says base attack speed 1.16, right under that. These days, it says melee damage. And the change is, it's, it's, uh, it's adaptive. Adaptive is not a word that's used in the game anymore, but I'm gonna still use it because it's a descriptive word and I think description descriptive words are good. It adapts to whatever your tags are on the skill. So we have surge is our main uh, source of damage. It's what we're hitting things with. It does tons of damage. It has lightning tag. So, in the past, these crystal swords that have melee elemental damage increases and increases to elemental melee attack speed, and you use them on all of your elemental builds, they were good, but it was always kind of awkward that you also had this stupid physical damage that oftentimes didn't convert with the rest of your skill. These days, in 0 0.9, because all of the weapon types now have adaptive damage instead, Crystal Swords are one of the standout winners for that change because they were always used in these elemental builds and now your elemental damage is all pointing in the same direction instead of having the stupid physical damage over here on the side. So we love this. We stand this. It is a huge increase for our damage regardless of what the rest of your build is. It's very, very good. The second thing that we wanted to call out is, as it turns out, another small YouTube video that I put out in the past. One of the other changes for the 0 0.9 patch is that these days we have more access to more. We've got more, more multipliers that we've never had before. Prior to 0 0.9, there were like one, two ish kind of items out there that had the word more on them. But getting more damage on your gear is one of these things that Last Epoch is starting to do more and more and more often where it makes your gear matter. Your gear is very impactful when it has the word more damage on it. So we have this belt here, it's been buffed. It has more melee damage per stack of doom on the enemy. In case you don't know what doom is, you can hover your mouse over this and hold down alt. Doom is an ailment that says increased melee damage taken. For you Path of Exile players out there, increased damage taken is kind of like a more multiplier. So it stacks up four times, increases it by four. I wonder if this is multiplicative. I actually don't know. But roughly speaking, it's 16% more damage for your build. And this existed in the past. But if you can pair it with this belt, you also get an additional... 20% more damage multiplier for your character, which is awesome. Which brings us to the next topic of conversation here. And that is differences of this build 
to the uh, the bill that I'm going to link in the description of this video when Dread played this previous to the 0.9 patch. So he did a great job. He took a different approach for the defenses of the character, but he also included some other items that already existed at the time. So if you want to really grind your ass off, which is not what I wanted to do because I hate doing it, you can farm the Arena of Champions and use Vion's Chariot. Vion's Chariot, I'll have an image of it linked on the screen here. It is more damage for your movement skill every three seconds. And we are currently at a 2.2 second cooldown for Surge. 2.1 felt pretty comfy. 2.2 is a good place to be, I think. More than that, I don't like it. You really want as much cooldown as possible. Uh, it'll be like every other Surge will have a 40% more multiplier on it. So my build here, I've had people in Twitch chat for the past week saying, holy shit, you deal so much damage. What's going on here? What that really tells me is y'all don't play Spellblade enough because this is a pretty normal Spellblade build. They deal a lot of damage. But really, even without the more multipliers from something like Vion's Chariot, we're already one-shotting stuff. We are using a sweet shield that we're going to talk about in a minute. But if I took this off, if I didn't use Vion's Chariot, if I used a normal belt, my damage is still excellent. I'm still going to have a really good time playing this character. But one of the reasons that I want to play this character is like we have so many toys let's play with them so the next the topic of conversation is this shield here and it's, it's it's an important shield because bastion of honor has been so oppressive for such a long time bastion of honor it's it used to have a six meter which was like the the real definition of nearby six meters if anything is near you you have a hundred percent block chance against those hits these days it's been nerfed it's only four meters which means it's still pretty good for melee characters because you're going to be up close and personal very very often but if you're a ranged character maybe you don't use bastion of honor maybe listen bastion of honor is still absurdly strong you probably use it in every build but this is an educational stream this shield is interesting because it's an iron glass shield iron glass shields have the highest base implicit block chance at 35 this shield also has block chance rolled on it already 10 to 20 percent this one is 16 and if you get it with one LP, you could even put more block chance on it again, which is exactly what we did here. So with one item, I go from 0% block chance to 68% block chance. This is pretty flipping good. Even though it's not a Bastion of Honor, which is 100% block chance, but only against nearby enemies, this is a ton of block chance from just one item here. So you could go out of your way and get exalted block chance on your rings and exalted block chance on your gloves. That's four each for 12. And that brings you up to 80% block chance from using this shield instead of using the conditional block chance for nearby enemies that Bastion of Honor gives you. This is an underrated item. It is a sweet item. It's got more, or sorry, it's got 70 melee crit multi on it permanently. The downside of the shield is, first of all, it's not Bastion of Honor, so pfft, Bastion of Honor. But the downside of the shield is it chunks your health every three seconds. So this is going to segue into some of the defensive things that you could do to mitigate this. We'll talk about how Dread mitigated this in the past in his YouTube video. I'll talk about an option that you could try, and then I'll talk about what I actually did for this character. So in the past, what Dread tried for this character is he didn't scale HP. All of his suffixes on his gear, instead of going for hybrid health and percent health, Instead of having, how much carrot left? I got 2,600 HP on this character. He had like 1,200 HP on this character. But he built a bunch of regen. And on top of that, he used the Vessel of Strife, which is a unique uh, relic that comes from Tier 4 Jura. if you spend enough time farming that and also have a little bit of RNG on your side. So this thing says your health regen also applies to ward. And if you stack intelligence, you have ward retention. If you take the nodes in your mastery, you have ward per second and ward per second per intelligence. And then your health regen is also applying to your ward. And you're like a ward-based character. It's fine. I just... The reason I didn't end up going with this, even though it makes your HP globe look a little bit safer because your health is always going up, even if your ward's covering it. The reason I didn't do this is your relic's really good. <laughs> your relic is a crit multi-base. You can get crit multi on it, you can get plus levels to surge, and you get tons of resistances on it. If you're really going to go out of your way and start using like a Siphon of Anguish and a Quicksilver Rain to give you haste, because haste is movement speed and movement speed gives you more damage in this build, we'll get there later. And if you also want to use a Vion's Chariot, like all of a sudden, you're using these items that don't really have as much resistance as you want. And like, we're not even capped on any of our resistances, 
I'd be interested in using something like an Aurora's Time Glass, which gives you the ability to not die, kind of, periodically. Uh, this thing right here. But if I'm doing that, you know, I'm, I'm giving up the opportunity cost of having a bone amulet base and double suffixes on it. So if resistances are tight on a build like this, thankfully, some of the new base types give you crit avoidance. So your suffixes are a little bit easier to squeeze in than they used to be. But you really got to think about these things when you're trying to go out of your way and include as much of the new fancy stuff as you can. Because fancy stuff's fun, but where's your resistance at? So that's how Dread tried to mitigate this. He went the health regen route. Uh, one very interesting option is this one, and it's new, and it's almost awesome. It's really, really close to awesome. These nodes here, called Reactive Ward, used to be garbage tier. However, in 0 0.9, they're buffed. These nodes say, when you drop below 70% health, you get a burst of ward based on your maximum health. Ward per 10, 1, you put 10 points in this, that means you get 1 point of ward per 1 point of health every time that you drop below 70% health. It's got a 12 second cooldown. If you grab all these nodes over here, it goes to a six second cooldown uh, instead. If you're playing a normal spellcaster build and you happen to be using a Twisted Heart, this is incredible. And you should be using this on a Twisted Heart build because it's awesome. This shield does proc it. Every three seconds, you lose 25% of your maximum health, which is very interesting. However, you lose 25% of your maximum health. And this only works when you're below 70% of your health. If this was below 75% of your health instead, if this thing procced every single time that this procced, assuming that you can leech or regen back to full, it would be crazy good. It's very close to crazy good. However, it costs 10 points here. You probably want to put five points here and three points here. Like It's kind of like 18 points that you're investing into it. It's kind of like 13 points because these points are pretty generically strong. But like, it's a lot of points. And it's really close to being awesome. But it's a little bit inconsistent because it only happens every six, uh, every six seconds. And then sometimes it doesn't hit exactly when you want it to because you've leached back too much and you're back at full health. And those two 70% and the 25% health loss don't line up exactly as well as you want them to. It's a long-winded explanation. So here's the third thing to talk about with regards to the shield. How else could you mitigate the downside of this? Well, we tried to go Leech. And it was okay, except for the fact that my gear is so bad. But I do think Leech is a very good option for this. Especially if you're doing something like Arena. Because in Arena, you're always going to be Leeching. You're always going to be um, near an enemy. There's going to be something in, uh, in, uh, something near you that you can hit and Leech off of. When you're walking around like this, or if there's long spanses in the arena where you're not fighting an enemy, your health goes down and it does kind of look awkward. But when there's good monster density, I think Leech is a great answer. So the ring that we're using rolls between 1 and 3% melee damage Leech's health. My ring has 1, so it's as low as it possibly goes. And I only have tier 2 melee Leech on my gloves. It goes up to like 6.5 or 6.9 or something. So I could more than double my Leech if I had better gear. Hopefully your gear is better if you end up going the leech route. But I do think the leech route is very good because instead of going the ward route, you get to have endurance. And having endurance, scaling off your maximum HP is just one of the strongest things that you can do defensively. It's why we're in the middle of a health meta and it's why everybody builds health on every single character. So that's that's the justification for the shield. It's a sweet shield, it's underrepresented. I would happily use this again and I probably will use this again if I'm playing Rive or something. So watch for that in the future. We talked about the melee damage implicit, which is a huge change for elemental builds like this. We talked about new, more damage multipliers that you can get on things like Shatter Change that didn't exist in the past. And we talked about the shield and how this is a better shield now than it's been in the past because relative to Bastion of Honor, Bastion of Honor got nerfed. And this thing has 68 block chance. Holy shit. All right. So that's what we're in love with. At least that's what I'm in love with. Let's talk about like a general overview of the character. We'll talk about why static does virtually nothing for this build, but it's still mandatory. And we'll go over like skills, gear, passive, stuff like that. So first up, the skills. We are a melee elemental damage build. We are scaling the surge itself. So we're going to go poke, 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 and then surge. And it's going to have a whole bunch of damage on it. Uh, surge has some more damage multipliers that stack up while it's on cooldown. So we want to be attacking while it's on cooldown. We'll get to that in just a moment with Firebrand. We also have this multiplier here, which is important because 
it doesn't convert. It says Surge deals more lightning damage per four static charges when you use Surge. If you just put Surge on your bar, Surge has 100 stacks uh, default, but you can double it to 200 stacks. So you'd really like to spec into Surge, double the strength of that more multiplier from 75% more damage to 150% more damage. It also technically gives you some other buffs, not really. It's, it's almost useless, but it does hit enemies. It has this little zap that happens periodically. And every time that zap happens, it might apply chill, it might apply armor shred, or perhaps more importantly, it might apply doom, which is enemies take percent increase melee damage. So the rest of surge is like some quality of life. We have like AOE, we have traveling further, uh, this node here. We have damage that scales on your movement speed, which is why we specifically want to have a haste ring. And as a melee character who's using your movement skill for damage, it's really important that you have some kind of mobility in your character. I really think that you do want haste from this, and there's not really a different place that you get haste instead. So Quicksilver Ring, LP, something else on it, get life, get crit avoid, get something else. And then we have the invulnerability while surging. You could get even more damage on this character if you're into it by taking the 20% more damage and minus distance. I don't think you need more damage, but if you want more damage, you can take this node. It feels just a tiny bit awkward not to be able to surge the maximum distance. I would probably keep these travel distance nodes here as well, but strictly speaking, if you wanted a bigger damage number, you would drop these three and one nodes, these four nodes here. You'd put points into this and make your distance as small as possible. But if you're playing Surge, you're probably interested in being Zoomy because it's damage while moving. So depending on why you're playing this character, uh, you might just not take this more multi. Next up is Flame Ward. It's a very boring skill. I spec it the same 100% of the time when I'm using Flame Ward. I grab the second charge and I grab all the damage reduction possible. I have the uh, duration mana efficiency and a couple nodes over here which are flexible. Uh, this time we have 100% increased lightning damage. For enchant weapon, whenever I say I numb lock, what I'm actually doing is I'm holding down my pinky and I'm just holding down Q for my entire life because I don't have numb lock on my PC. So we have the nodes down here for duration, minus mana cost to make it nice and easy. We've got some extra uh, flat uh, lightning and cold damage from our weapon here. Attack speed, some extra lightning damage, and you could go for lightning leech, but I think you'd rather just get the leech from uh, the gear and having better gear. We talked about static already because it does almost nothing. Firebrand. This is a common question that I've received on Twitch when I'm playing this character because sometimes somebody hasn't seen a Flame Reap character or a Surge character before and they don't know why are you poke, 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 poke. Why are you not simply bonk? Which maybe is an oversimplification, but it's basically the question, right? So remember Surge gets more damage, these dormant energy stacks. This is one of the reasons that we're tagging. The other reason that we're attacking in between our surges is, well, surges on cooldown, we get to use this. And uh, depending on the number of stacks we consume, we have four stacks by default, plus two is six stacks. And then per stack that we consume, well, when we use a different skill other than the Firebrand, we get a big more damage multiplier from the incineration node. This node has been nerfed in 0 0.9. It used to be an automatic crit. Instead, it only gives you 36 base critical strike chance. So the base crit chance of any skill in the game is 5, so 36 plus 5 is 41. So building a measly 100% increased crit puts you from 41 to 82% crit. It really doesn't take much to cap your crit. In fact, I'm not even capped, but it still feels excellent. So this node is still great. It's still the reason that you play the build. It feels very good to just crit all the time and have huge crit multi numbers. The rest of this is just a tiny piece of quality of life with some attack speed, some ignite that gets converted to shock on the very bottom left here. We have a static node just to make sure that we're capped on our static so we get that more multiplier as big as possible from the surge tree, and then some extra ward generation stuff. That about does it for the skills. Let's go on to the mastery. We talked about the top nodes here as an interesting way to mitigate the downside of the unique shield that we're using. It doesn't quite line up. I tried it, it felt awesome like 80% of the time, but it didn't feel awesome enough, so I ended up cutting it from the build. But it's an interesting option. I do like these new nodes here. There's a lot of new stuff in the mage tree, even in the sork tree, and I don't think there's anything new in the spellblade tree, but anytime that they introduce these nodes that have like a threshold, like it's eight out of eight, but if you put five points and you get the bonus, love that. Want to see more of that in Last Epoch. 
So we've got some pretty uh, boring looking stuff here. Attack speed, crit chance, crit multi. The rest of this, we're basically clicking on everything that gives us flat damage, anything that gives us defense, things that give us attack speed, and most notably, uh, we have two sections of the skill tree. One is the cooldown recovery speed for Surge, which is absolutely mandatory to have eight points in here. And then we have a bunch of points down here. Uh, this, one of the capstone nodes from the Spellblade Mastery, is very important. I said that there were reasons that we're attacking in between our Surge, because Firebrand gives us buffs, because Surge gives us buff. The other reason that we're attacking with our Firebrand in between Surge is this node. This node is insane. This is 15% more damage for each time that you've attacked in between your uh, your big attacks. So when you use a skill that costs 10 or, or sorry, when you use a, a skill that costs 10 or less mana, you gain a stack. When you use a skill that costs 10 or more mana, you consume the stacks and get 15% more damage. And it's also a reason, if you take a look at my uh, buffs down here, if I go poke, 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 these nodes, this blade weaving you see pop in the bottom right corner over here, this stacks up even if I'm not currently hitting anything. So I get more buffs if I do hit stuff because of Firebrand, but strictly speaking, you could kind of charge up your blade weaving like this and then go in and have some pretty good damage as well. You're going to miss the more damage multipliers, but you know, you do what you can. It's an important thing to know about. Uh, notable exclusion here. If you're playing in something like Arena, you're going to have very good density. So you're able to keep up Shattered Aegis um, to mitigate the downside of this thing. Outside of Arena, I'm comfortable not taking this because there's really plenty of instances in the game where like you don't really have good uh, good density and I'd rather just have the maximum effect of Arcane Shielding. But strictly speaking, especially in a dense situation like Arena or if you're only caring about single target damage, you take all these nodes and then you have some extra percent increased armor scaling as well. So that does it there. Instead of showing you my gear, I'm going to swap over to a different view and I'm going to show you a build planner that we just put together like this. So this is, roughly speaking, the gear that I have in-game, except I'm pretending like my damage leech's health number is a little bit higher, because I'm still kind of sad that my leech is not as good as I want it to be, because it, it min-rolled everywhere. <laughs> so the important things about this, on our, uh, on our gear, we're going to prioritize life, so anytime that we can get percent health, we want percent health. Anytime that we can get hybrid health, we want hybrid health. And we're also going for vitality, prefixes instead of intelligence prefixes because we want as much health as possible we have new base types crit avoidance is a new chest piece you could go for crit avoid helmet but we opted into a cooldown recovery speed helmet instead remember cooldown recovery speed is going to help you surge more often and that's where all your damage is so you really want as much cooldown recovery speed as possible going into this build we talked about using opal rings opal rings are the new ring base that give you extra cooldown recovery speed and some attributes which is sweet but at the end of the day, I think you do want Doom, and I think you do want the haste that comes from Quicksilver Coil as well. So you can't make use of the Opal Rings. You'd rather just go cooldown recovery speed places. You'd rather get cooldown recovery speed in other places, like maybe the helmet, and specifically the boot suffix. So we have cooldown recovery speed on the uh on the boots here. Remember, cooldown recovery speed is no longer a prefix modifier on the helmet. Before you start typing that, don't bother, because it doesn't exist anymore. On the weapon, we're looking for as much melee lightning damage as possible. Melee cold damage technically scales your damage. It just is cold instead of is lightning. And the reason that you want as much lightning damage as possible is, for example, in Surge, you have nodes that give you more lightning damage as opposed to generic more damage or generic more melee damage. So you'd like to have as much flat lightning as possible. The attack speed feels excellent. I highly recommend that you use attack speed instead of a second damage affix there. For the rest of our prefixes, I'm going for Lightning Critical Strike Multiplier because all of our damage is Lightning and our crit cap is very easy to reach. A little bit of crit chance on the amulet should round things out. On the gloves, we're looking for Melee Leech's Health and Melee Attack Speed. You could go for Area of Effect if you're not going for uh, the Melee Damage Leech's Health if you're not going the Leech route. Because remember, AoE is now something that you can roll on gloves. But I recommend getting Leech and I recommend getting Attack Speed as well to make the build feel nice and smooth. For the Relic, we talked about this in game a little bit, but the plus two level of the Surge gives you plenty of things to spec into, whether it's damage or quality of life. And then Crit Multi is another great thing to pick up there. For the Idols, the only important Idols are these four by ones. You'd like as much cooldown recovery speed as possible. So the suffixes on the Idols don't really matter. Some extra armor would be nice. Some extra flat melee damage would be nice as well. But realistically, you just want the highest cooldown recovery speed number possible. I think if you get all the cooldown recovery speed, you probably get to like 1.6 or something if you really go for tier 7 modifiers. 
but I'm sitting at 2.2 cooldown recovery speed for my surge and it feels excellent. So that's what I'm going to recommend to you. 2.3 didn't feel good. 2.1 felt great, but I settled on 2.2 for the cooldown recovery speed there. And there's one more thing that we'll talk about and that is blessings. So for the blessings, I always like looking at this view here because I find it very easy to talk about the blessings there. Uh, we went for some crit multi from the Black Sun because we don't need any spell leech. We don't, don't need any void res. So just crit multi there because we're a crit build. We are a lightning damage build. So we'd like to have shred. Remember shred, instead of stacking up 20 times like it used to, it now only stacks up 10 times, but it's still excellent. You're still going to take it every single time because it's so important to get that kind of... Um, scaling in your build because like we're not really going to get shred or penetration from a different source <laughs> from the rest of this we have some critical strike avoidance let's see what's my crit avoidance at we're using crit avoid base crit avoid base we're at 133 crit avoidance realistically because spellblade and mages have these new bases with crit avoidance as the implicit modifiers you probably don't want the crit avoidance as the blessing you'd probably prefer to have all resistance from the blessing as instead but one of those two things is what you want to use the reign of dragons for like 90 percent of the time we have spirits of fire giving us a bunch of flat armor i say this before and i'll say it again the more i play last epoch the more i end up using both of these blessings the age of winter and spirits of fire for flat armor and percent armor because armor feels very good and the more armor that i put on my characters the happier i am so i'm going to recommend that to you as well for this character though we went out of the way to get block effect instead because we're using the shield that has so much block chance on it my block effectiveness gives me 51 percent damage reduction and all i have is the block effect from the implicit of the shield and the block effect from the blessing so 68 percent of the time i have 50 percent damage reduction which feels excellent. I'm very impressed by the block aspect of this build. Regarding Julra, we can talk about that for just a moment. Tier 4 Julra is something that I often do uh, on all my characters because it's a lot of fun. This character, I think, is a very bad choice for Tier 4 Julra. You are a melee build, which by itself is a pretty bad choice, but you're also using a movement skill for damage. And unless you're a mechanical genius, you're going to use this thing and you're going to jump into a void beam and you're just going to die. So I recommend against using this character to farm the tier 4 bosses. It's more of just a monolith farmer, but for what it is, it's a lot of fun. So if you have any ideas about how you could use this shield, because I'm specifically interested in it, in different builds, I would love to hear it. Like whether you're using like a health regen route or you're pairing it with ward or even just doing leech like we were trying to do here. Uh, I think I think I want to use the shield more often. It's been a lot of fun think that about does it for the character. Again, appreciate you being here. I'll see you next time.